Hey my friends, thank you so much for being here today. My name is Denise. I'm also known as Hey Wig Sister on Instagram and Facebook. Today I'm here to bring you a little bit of a tutorial. I filmed the review of the wig on my head, which is Aesthetica Sage. And in that video, I mentioned that I would be doing a part two showing how I customize uh, sage for me and I really wanted to film a video doing this even though everything I'm going to show right now I have shown in previous videos I know how helpful it is to see people actually doing the things that they say that they do to wigs uh, I am a visual learner I learn by watching others do things and then uh, trying to follow along myself. So I do much better watching someone do something than read about it or read instructions. So hopefully this will be helpful to you if you're struggling right now with the wig journey and trying to figure out how to make wigs work for you. So let's just get right into what I'm going to do to Sage. So one of the things that I do to almost all of my Aesthetica wigs is I trim the lace back on them. So let's look at the lace. There's the lace. And I just find Aesthetica wig lace does not uh, melt into my forehead as well as some other brands. In addition, I find it to be just a little long. And so because I adhere my wigs with it stays, you know, it, it really does tack that wig down really well. But what happens is I get like a line of demarcation or a little indent where that lace is because I find the Seneca lace to be a little long for me. So I'm going to trim the lace. I do have a tip Tuesday showing how to do that. I'm also going to pluck the part line. I generally, I do think Aesthetica parts are really good. And oftentimes I just put a little bit of makeup on the part line and I find that to be so helpful with Aesthetica wigs. But um, on this one, I do want to have just a little bit more of a defined part line. So, and, and also when you pluck the part on a wig, it actually helps the wig to lay a lot better on one side or the other of that part. And I do want that because I find I'm, I'm just having trouble getting the wig to lay exactly like I like it on the part line. And then the third thing I'm going to do is I am going to take a marker. I have here a Copic marker. And I'm going to put a little bit of kind of rooting in just because this color is a little light for my bio hair. And if I add a little bit of rooting, then if I want to tuck the wig, it is going to blend with that bio hair, which does show a little bit better. And I do like to tuck my wig. So those are the three things that I'm going to do to this wig. So if you want to see all of that, well, stick around. All right, so here we are. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna trim the lace. Since I do have a Tip Tuesday on how I do this, I am just going to link the Tip Tuesday in the bottom of this video in the description so you can go watch that. But I will just tell you, I am using my handy dandy pinking shears that I got on Amazon. I, I recommend and prefer to use pinking shears versus straight scissors. Even though they are just a little bit unwieldy, they're so big they can be hard sometimes to get going with but once you kind of get cutting it's not that difficult and I just prefer the wavy line that this makes I think it's more realistic looking it blends in better because it doesn't create any sort of a line it's got that little wavy and you know John Renault recommends that you use pinking shears on their lace because of how it's welded together it a straight line could uh, cause the lace to fray at some point so I have just taken that advice and I apply it to all of my kind of these name brand ready to wear wigs. I find that so far I've had no issues and I have not had lace fray. And you will hear some people say, and they may even say in the comments, don't cut your lace, it will cause it to fray. All I can tell you is my own personal experience and the experience of a lot of wig sisters, I've heard from a lot. And I do not believe that if you cut the lace properly, 
it will fray. And so I do this a lot. You must proceed at your own risk and with your own comfort level, but this is my recommendation. So I'm going to take the pinking shears and I'm just going to trim off a little bit of this lace. I did take a before and I will have an after as well. So you can see a comparison of the two pictures. So I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to get the lace cut. All right, I am back. I trimmed up the lace. And so now we've got a much cleaner lace front. You can see the scalloped edge there and it just melts into my head. There's no detection whatsoever. Whereas in the first video, you really could see that when I showed it to you. So that is step one. And depending on how much lace you cut, you may wind up with just a little bit of hair. So I wound up cutting into the hair just a little bit. And so that's the amount of hair that I got. Um, more than I typically do, I really wanted to cut this one close. And I did feel that the hairline, while good, was just a little heavy anyway. So I was comfortable cutting into that hairline and then taking off a little bit of that hair and just going like this whatever hair it got cut into comes off you just want to be real go real slow and you can start very very shallow and then move back if you feel the need to but this to me feels a lot more natural now and I think you would agree it looks a lot more natural so the next step for me is going to be to pluck the hairline uh, the I'm sorry the uh, the part and just so that I have a little bit more uh, definition now because this is not rooted and it's not a dark color it's going to be a little bit difficult for me to show on video what I've done now there are a couple schools of thought again I have a tip Tuesday on how to pluck apart I will link all of these other videos in the description where you can really watch them sort of from start to finish this is more just me showing you how sage uh, evolves as I customize her. So what I like to do is I actually like to actually pluck. Now you will have some people who will tell you that if you pluck with a tweezers, you have run the risk of ripping the monofilament. I, uh, I, I just don't like the tediousness of taking like a little razor and trying to cut the knots off, which I think John Renault recommends and some of John Renault ambassadors out there will do videos like tip tutorial videos a lot of times on Instagram and they show where you can take a little like a like a, a tiny little razor, like a cuticle, I forget what they call it, but and then they kind of scrape at those knots. That is just too tedious for me. I do pluck, I just go very slow. I try to only pluck one or two hairs at a time so that I don't rip the lace. And so far I've had no issues. But so I just take and I find kind of my part line, make sure that you've got it defined. And then I just go in there and I just start to grab some hair uh, you know, one or two hairs, and then I just pull it out and then I get it and I set it aside. And so I will do that. Sometimes I'll do a few on my head. Um, I'll start off just kind of plucking a little bit now, and then I'll put it on my head because I don't want to over pluck. So you pause quite a few times to make sure that you don't over pluck. So I'm just going to show you that part line one more time. And I got to get a few pictures taken before I start and then I'll get started. So there's that part line now. Again, the light color, it'll be hard to see, but let's get going. All right, I am back and I have plucked the part line. So here you go. Now, I did just take the before and after picture and you can really tell a difference. It just, also in just how the hair lays so much nicer on one side or the other. It really is, does not take much. This is the hair that I got from the plucking. So it's not a lot of hair, but it's just enough to make a difference. And you can do as much or as little as you'd like. Uh, it may also be a multiple session type of thing. You do a little bit now and then you kind of see what you think and maybe later you decide you want to do a little bit more. You, you know, just take your time. I you know, don't feel like it has to all be done in one sitting. Now, before I add the rooting, I do want to talk about another thing that I do with some of my wigs to help make the part look a little bit more realistic and I that is to use makeup on the part you can use concealer 
foundation, powder. Uh, there is this palette that Milano makes called Scalp Illusion, and it has a whole bunch of different colors in the palette that you can use. Uh, as you can see, I've used this one. I've kind of used a little bit of all the colors as I experiment with it. Um, I think this is a great product. I don't think you need to pay this kind of money for product like this, though. I will link it in the description if you really want it because it is good and it definitely gives you choices, but I think just regular old concealer or foundation works. You might want to use a little bit of a lighter shade than what you typically use on your face because as you know, the scalp uh, isn't often, it's a little bit lighter than our, our face skin due to tanning and other makeup and so you know being in the sun even if you don't tan your skin probably gets a little bit of color in the summer and your scalp is typically a different color so whatever works for you and then what I do and again I think I have another video on this uh, but I just basically take a little foundation brush or makeup brush and I just kind of dab it on the underside and then I dab it on the outer side and I kind of go back and forth as I sort of mash the color into the monofilament until it looks the way I want it to look. So that is something I um, may end up doing with this one as well. I'm not going to do that right now though because I'm not sure if I'll want to, if I'll need to once I add the rooting. So that is my final step here, is adding a little bit of rooting. I have a couple of different videos on adding rooting. I have added rooting with furniture markers, so furniture touch-up markers work. This Copic marker works. Um, I can't find my furniture touch-up markers right now since we moved, and so I, I just grabbed this one because it was in with all my other supplies. So this has two different tips. I like to use the fatter tip, and I actually am on the hunt for a marker that's even fatter than this. I feel as though I could use just a little bit more marker real estate uh, to make it go a little bit easier. But then all you do, and again, I show this in a video, and I actually show it with a blonde wig. I took a, a um, Tressalor Mia, and I completely changed her look by adding low lights and rooting with a marker and it looked amazing uh, for, for a wig that was too blonde for me. But so I just take it and I just paint on right onto the hair fibers. I just sort of paint down the fiber. I want to avoid getting it on the cap and I just paint it on the fiber and that way I can do as much or as little as I want. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then I'll come back and show it to you and then I have a whole lot of pictures for you guys befores and afters. You know, it just occurred to me, I could show this just a little bit. Uh, so I thought I'd get on here and just kind of show you one side to the other, even though I do have another video on this. And we'll link it. I just thought I could show it really quickly so you can kind of see how that looks. So you can see how it's adding some dimension and some darkness. And actually, let's go down here. Because this is where I really want to be able to blend my own bio hair. So my bio hair is just a little bit darker than this marker. But I think it's going to do just fine. So, see that side? See that side? It's going to really help with the blending. So that's why I recommend um, uh, doing something like this. If you do get a color that's too light for you, don't worry. All is not lost. You can do a lot of things to a wig to help it make it wearable. It also opens up the possibilities for you with clearance and sale wigs because you often don't get to choose. You don't have a lot of choices in those. So it makes you more flexible and then that way you can take advantage of lower prices. So I'm gonna stop the video, finish doing this, then I'll come back and show you the finished product. All right, I am back and I am finished with the rooting. And I did put a little bit of makeup on the part line just to draw that out just a little bit. And 
I am very pleased with how this turned out. Now, I may want to add some more low lights at some point with the marker. That is actually the part that's the most tedious is the marker part. It just takes a little bit of time. Um, but all done, if I would not have been filming, this may have taken me 15 minutes maybe 20 total. I mean, the cutting of the lace is quick, the plucking is quick, and so it really wouldn't have taken all that long. And so this isn't like customization that is super difficult. It doesn't require a lot of tools. I used a tweezers, I used a pinking shears, and you know, you probably already have makeup that you can use if you wanted to put makeup on the part line. The final thing that I might choose to do on occasion is add a little sea salt spray. So this is the Aesthetica sea salt spray. I think any sea salt spray will do. It doesn't have to be Aesthetica. I think it can even be human hair spray, but if you put a little bit of sea salt spray in and you just kind of scrunch it up, you can really play up the waves because this one's got you know good texture because of the layers. So just spraying a little bit of sea salt spray on it and then doing some scrunching. And you can, I mean, with the, between the permities and the waves on this one, I think you can do a lot with changing up the style to make it a little bit fun and more sort of wild and messy with volume or you can tame it. And John Renault Peace Out Cream or other styling cream would work as well. This is also a great one because it does have such a good lace front. If you wanna get kind of fun and do some little twists, with, you know, and then putting some clips in with a little twists and things like that. Lots of lots of potential. But step number one is to make sure that you create a look that fits your style. And for me, that include often includes cutting the lace back and plucking the part line. I hope that this helped you. I hope it inspired you to start playing with your wigs. I also hope it opened up the possibilities for you to purchase some wigs that may not be perfect for you out of the box. Uh, especially if you're on a, a budget, looking for those clearance wigs, those eBay finds, or just a wig sister selling a style that doesn't work for her can really open up the possibilities for you because let's face it, uh, money is tight for a lot of us right now and things are just getting more and more expensive. So the more you empower yourself to play with your wigs, the more wigs will be available to you. Thank you so much for being here and for watching. Let me know if you have questions and here come a whole bunch of pictures.